Hey, replay viewers and cat lovers. Hey, Mom, it's done. I want to show you the fence system. It's completed. Uh-oh. I bet I don't have much of a signal. I might not have enough signal to do this. Here's our gate. Hey, Michelle. So we built a gate that attaches to the... So the deck is where they have been up there. They go down under behind the lattice. Then they come out to this giant fence. Um, the fence goes 36 feet down from where I'm standing. If I move, I'm going to lose signal. Um, it goes, let's see, uh, 12, 12, 36 feet down, 24 feet across. 36 feet down the other side. You can see them out there messing around. I'll see if I can walk forward. And then we took, at the far end, you can see we took the cat, the little cat pin that they were in, and we connected it. You can see Tonka just went in there. Um, so they have like a dog leg extension. And that's Grit. And there's Juniper Hoot. They're exploring. Um, the two scaredy cats haven't come out yet. We have two cats that are real fearful, and they haven't come out yet. So I'll try and walk down this way. So you can see the overhang that makes sure that the cats can't get out. And down there at the bottom, you can see that the hard metal wire, which is two feet long. Let me see if I can point to it right there they were just up on that deck where i scoped from in the house and the deck was and the little bitty metal pin that you see at the back they had that so they had the deck then they came down this ramp and they went into that small five by twelve metal dog kennel yeah they did i misunderstood you i mean i i answered you incorrectly <laughs> So they used to be on the deck. They'd come down the ramp. They'd go into that crate, uh, dog kennel. That's 5 by 12. So now they have whatever, however many square feet. I think it's like 95 square feet or something. Hey, Hootsie. So Tonka down there at the end. <laughs> well, this is for me. Like, this isn't entirely for them. Our house is small, and these guys need to get outside and get exercise. And not drive me insane. So, if you're a DIY person, this was not hard to install. <laughs> it wasn't bad. And if, you're, if you haven't done DIY projects with your husband or spouse before, don't start with this, because it was complicated. Uh, to some degree. See who running? That's what I wanted. I wanted them to be able to just run. Um, so I'm very happy about that. Hey Sarah, this is the completed cat area. So we had to get creative up there because we made a gate. Yeah, you have to be able to build stuff together to be able to do this together. Otherwise, I would recommend hiring someone to do it. <laughs> so we've got three of them out there already they're having a blast they're running playing we'll put more log structures out there we're going to build shelves um, they're going to have all kinds of stuff to get crazy on so to keep the critters in and out this hard metal fence is staked down to the ground right um this is the those hog rings i was telling you guys about they clip this all together so this is hard metal and this is soft deer fence. So it's highly unlikely that Tonka could chew through that. He's the one that will try. Um, but I don't think he can. So we've got three of them. Three out of five are outside and have been outside now for a couple of, a couple of hours. Oh, somebody's gagging up a hairball. That's nice. That's nice. So clearly... Uh, yeah, you know, Sarah, it's not that bad. It wasn't bad to put up. It is expensive. But when you think about um, your cats being safe, the orange guy across from us, that's Tonka. 
He's not called the naughtiest cat in the world for nothing. He's cost us a lot of money when he used to run loose, um, getting into stuff and getting hurt. He lost a tooth. It's ridiculous. What's up, Pootie? Um, so when you think about the vet bills you're going to pay with them running loose and potentially getting killed, yeah. Yeah, we've got 10 acres, but we have so many creatures, and Tonka's just a disaster. Yeah. We didn't want to always be looking for them. That causes us, my husband and I both, quite a lot of anxiety when we couldn't find them to come in at night. Because we used to lock them up at night when they used to run loose anyway. Uh, but it's pretty anxiety producing. So they have that big 36, 24, 36. That's not Barbie's measurements. That's actually, uh, dude, Sarah, I desire prosperity, Mala. <laughs> And their old pin is down there as a dog leg. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. So what I was going to say is around the outside of this, we run a hot wire. They we, they had a hot wire around that metal dog kennel. That's all they had before. Now they've got all this Shangri-La, kitty Shangri-La. And we've got five, too. It's just two of them haven't come outside yet. They're scared. It, the old catio is connected on the end. I might be able to get you out there. Can you see? We just connected it. So that little narrow opening is the gate. So we just cut the black fence and made an opening. and just So they have a little extension there. Oh, yeah. This is to get them out from under my feet. Our house is... It's less than... It's 600 and something square feet. Like 630 or 650 or something small. So this is to get them outside so that I don't kill them. Because <laughs> they drive me nuts. When they're stuck inside, they're not happy. I'm not happy. I don't think it's healthy for animals to live indoors 24 hours a day. <laughs> I just don't think that's healthy. I think cats who never get outside are not as healthy as ones that can at least get some fresh air. I mean, that's our house right there. That's it. It's 22 feet long. It's really small. So that window's our bedroom, and then the other window's our bathroom. It's really little. Oh, puppies are awesome. Your brother's property has centipedes, rattlers, coral snakes. Jeez, yeah. So, oh my gosh. So, Sarah, if you show this to your brother, there's a link on my web page that... Uh, if you go to caddyshackdesigns.com, on the right-hand side is a perfect fence link. That is an affiliate link. So if somebody buys a fence, I do make a little money off that. But this extension bar, Sarah, it is spring-loaded. So if an adventurous cat managed to make it through this curve, and they generally will not climb upside down, that bar is spring-loaded. So as soon as their weight hits it, uh, it drops, so they'll let go of the fence. Um, the worst thing I've heard when I was doing all the reviews was that um, sometimes you'll get a cat inside, and then you have to deal with that. But as far as them getting out, there's no getting out if you've got your fence. So this fence is staked to the ground. Um, that was really hard because we had to use a sledgehammer to get the yeah, that would be horrible. I mean, a, a bunch... Our cats are former ferals, three of them. And then we had to build our own gate. They will sell you a gate for a price that I thought was a little bit scandalous since we have enough scrap wood around that we could just build our own gate. I think to buy a gate was like an additional $200. And I was like, oh, hell no. We just build our own gate. It's not pretty, but we're... We are about, um, we are function over form around here, and I can't get that loose. Oh, let me see if I can get us inside. We'll get a latch for this. We won't, we won't always do the bungee cord thing. Oh, oh God, I really can't get that loose. Jeez. Scandalous. It's criminal. It's criminal. Another 200 bucks? Are you kidding me? No. 
No, sir. I mean, a gate is easy to build. It's some two-by-fours. Yeah, your brother probably. No, because we have a hot wire. So this welded metal fence right here is ground staked. See, so nothing, nothing's coming under this either, Jana. It would take a lot of work for something to dig under. And then um, just as an additional safety feature, because we're paranoid when it comes to the cats, we run a hot wire about 12 inches above the ground outside. And it goes all the way around. So anything coming close is going to get a little zingy-wingy. And hopefully not come close again. So there's Gritzy. Oh, do you see this? She's going to pounce on somebody. She's getting geared up, ready to go. Somebody's coming down the ramp. So, uh, well, me too. And since we have bear and possums and raccoons and bobcats and coyotes, do you see her? She's going to get somebody. I don't know who's coming down the ramp, but somebody's about to get it. <laughs> She's such a bitch. I'll show you. I want to see if she's going to nab somebody here real quick. Oh, it's Juna. They hate each other. Stop it. You're not ambushing him. He's just now coming. Go. Go on. Yeah. So here's Juna. He's our little scared guy. He was born feral, and he remains pretty wild. He's like, uh, I always say that if you adopted a raccoon and tried to make it a pet, yeah, that's exactly what she was doing. She was sneaking up here because she knew he was coming down. It'll take him a long time to come outside. He was a kitten. It took me four months to get him to come inside. And he was about four months old when he showed up. Oh, there's some cat poop for you to look at. So above him is the deck where I scope from, where you guys see me talking from. So this is underneath our deck. The, we cut a trap door in the deck flooring so that we can close it if we need to keep them inside. And then we built them the, or Heath, I should say, built them that long ramp with stepping bars because without the stepping bars, then it's a kitty slide. And they don't like that very much. Hey, Juna. Hey, Juna. Burp, burp. Come outside, buddy. Oops. Come outside, buddy. Part of what I do on my website is I've done a, some consultations, but I really like helping people um, figure out, <laughs> I know, right? Get creative with getting their cats outside. It's really not as hard as we think it is. There's a few little things you have to adapt to because they're so clever. Thanks for the hearts. Um, they're, they're clever. And, yeah, so that's where we attached it to the house. We bought ourselves some more space by doing our own attachment to the house, too. Oop. Wee! She's running for her daddy. <laughs> hey, show, Heath, show how that, um, okay, see ya. Show how that bar is spring-loaded. Thanks for coming by, Sarah. Let me know if your brother has questions, so, yeah. So see if they climb up on it, it'll fall. Yeah, I'm really happy. It wasn't that bad. So, and then there's where we attach their old dog kennel cat pin. Bye! And then Jana or somebody, I think, asked me about the roof on this. And I was talking about the ribbons in the garden. Can you guys see the orange ribbons in the garden? That will keep the birds out, so we will do that here, too. Because we do have hawks and owls. Um, and you can see the dog kennel has a chicken wire top on it. Um, that was to keep them from getting out. But now that we have some significant open space, we have to uh, do something to keep the hawks and the owls from coming inside and snatching somebody up. It's not very likely... Well, make sure that butt is clean, Hoot. It's chilly. It is chilly. It's actually kind of cold. So Tonka 
is been going over every square inch to trying to find the outs, the spots where he can get out. It came out great. I'm really proud of us. Um, we did a really good job on it. We had problems on that incline, but we got creative and we figured it out and it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that bad at all. So we'll put more logs in here for this kind of activity. And this gets them out. They can get fresh air. They can get some exercise. So now they have all of this and all of the deck and under the deck. And, uh, yeah. So that's how you do it. If you want to keep your cats contained, this is a really, um, yeah, it's an investment, but so is the vet bill. The first time I had to take this guy to the vet because he'd gotten in trouble outside, um, it was over a thousand dollars. The fence was eight ninety five for all of this. <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> yeah, but that's, you know, so this fence is cheaper than one trip to the vet with them running wild. I would much rather let them run loose, but um, just, it's too expensive and they get hurt. And so, all right. Somebody's hungry. Say hello. Hey, dinner time. Let's go. <laughs> Well, he messed himself up pretty good. He lost a tooth. He had to have a shot. Um, he, you know, narrowly avoided having to have stitches. Grit's running around peeing everywhere. They said hi. Hi. Yeah, he's hungry. I'm hungry. Yeah, he's on dinner time. Come on, let's go. Move it. So anyway, that's a perfect fence system. If you order one, they do send you a DVD. Yeah, she's marking her territory. She's peeing everywhere. She's peeing everywhere, and Tonka's looking for an escape route. So, all right, my dears, anybody watching the replay, if you have questions about the perfect fence system, you can get a hold of me at caddyshackdesigns at gmail.com. You can go to my website and go on the right hand side for, uh, <laughs> yeah, a link. To perfect fence it's on the right side of my caddyshackdesigns.com website it's over on the right perfect fence so much better thank you Michelle so much better than um, a vet bill <laughs> so much cheaper than paying off for um, injuries and whatnot so all right, we're going to go get something to eat. I think we've earned it. Thanks for the shares and the hearts and hanging out with me. And um, It's a great solution for your cats. So love you guys. I'll see you in the morning for our um, Byron Katie study.